Good evening everyone, time for another Bitcoin report. Here is the chart of the Bitcoin from ClarkMoody.com and uh, you can see we had a minor sell-off this evening down to about 65 roughly or so and uh, you can see the kind of snapback rally. Now one of the reasons why I'm uh, still bullish, I'm going to stick by my call that this run here that we're on is pretty much going to go to 100 before it has a serious pause. I may be wrong. This may be the serious pause that we've been looking for. Uh, but I don't think so, at least up until this point. Just going by the volume, you can see uh, pretty much the red lines. This is not 100%, of course, because for every buyer, there's a seller. And every seller, there's a buyer. So but for the most part the red lines uh, going down here uh, are selling pressure those are transactions being initiated on the bid as opposed to transactions being initiated on the ask so that's uh, selling pressure people selling into the bid and you can see that volume there so uh, if we pull out a little bit and go to uh, the five uh, minute and uh, you can see there's that down uh, down spike. Uh, if we pull out to the 15 minute, you can see that down spike and the uh, lead up to it is roughly met by buying uh, coming in. And uh, if we pull out a little bit farther, you can see that as well. Uh, that spike is actually seems to be more buying than selling although we are rounding off here. So the question is, is, is this going to be some sort of top? I don't think so. I think uh, that probably this will consolidate over the weekend and, and go out and take out that 75 price target and probably run to 100 at that point. But again, I could be wrong. Again, the reason I say that is because if you look at these spikes, uh, almost all the spikes are met by furious buying. Even the uh, sell-off that we had, we had a couple of sell-offs. Uh, we had the initial one there. And then we had this other one here, but you can see the volume of the sell-off spike there. Even with that much selling, uh, it uh, was met by some very quick buying. And uh, you can see the current selling volume we have here is not very large in the scheme of things. It's going to take a lot more selling volume coming in uh, to push this market down. And for a number of reasons, I just don't see that happening right now. Now, let's go over to the blog, and uh, there's just news that comes fast and furious. It's, it's hard to cover. Of course, the mainstream media is really getting in on things. We had a Wall Street Journal. We, had a, uh, we have Bloomberg covering things. We have money coming in with the Cyprus thing. Uh, then we've got, of course, this FinCEN story. And uh, there's a lot of FUD about the FinCEN story. I'm still going to stick by my initial opinion that the FinCEN uh, take on things is actually very bullish. And uh, this is why I think so. Um, to me, what the FinCEN ruling says is that uh, FinCEN, you have to understand, their concern is about money laundering. Um, now, what is money laundering? Well, money laundering is uh, criminals uh, taking their illicit gains and essentially laundering them or washing the proceeds from their illicit uh, gains, criminal uh, activity, and legitimizing that money. So they're essentially washing it. They're buying and selling the money. They filter it through a business or something like that. So uh, my main... Uh, objection to the idea that uh, Bitcoin is going to be have a lot of money laundering as I pointed out before the, the market cap isn't high enough and we'll look at that when we get over to the uh, blockchain statistics but uh, that first of all the market cap isn't large enough but even more importantly I think is that I just don't see the money coming back out uh, now we are seeing on Mt. Gox the trading between Bitcoin and dollars and I think the pattern is clear when we look at the chart 
So what we're seeing is a lot of dollars coming in, but not a lot of Bitcoins being sold for dollars. I think that's why we're seeing this price rise. And it makes sense to me when you think about it. Uh, I have roughly, I don't know what I have roughly. I think I spent a couple of years ago, I think I spent about $500, maybe a little bit more, buying some Bitcoins on Mt. Gox. And I actually had my coins on there when it got hacked and I covered the flash crash, etc. And ended up pulling them off, uh, putting on some of the other ch exchanges. And uh, recently, I've been uh, I traded them into Litecoin and then took took my profits and, and waited. And now, uh, as I'll cover in a bit here, I, I'm back into Litecoin for the reasons we'll discuss here when we talk about Satoshi Dice. But for me, uh, I, FinCEN is not a concern at all because uh, I don't intend to take my money out of Bitcoin ever. Uh, I will buy some Litecoins with it and I'll probably buy some name coins with it and I'll trade back and forth between uh, Bitcoin and Namecoin and Litecoin and some other coins uh, but uh, and then maybe buy and sell virtual goods remember all of these things all the things that I just described uh, FinCEN doesn't care about the only thing they care about is you buying a hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars worth of bitcoins and then selling them again in other words laundering the money so uh, I just don't see a problem with it I think uh, I think the market has voted on that uh, the market reaction when that news came out we know that it was about uh, a little under 50 uh, just trying to get through that 48 level and with that news uh, the market took off so I, I think the market voted and I think the market's right so uh, let's get on to the forum here because I wanted to cover that's just so much to cover um, I want to jump over to the forum and uh, you can get there if you're on the blog uh, you can just click the link in the upper uh, left hand corner or just go to the Bitcoin channel forum what I've done here is I've done a sweepstakes um, I'm partly trying to uh, drive interest into Litecoin but I'm also uh, not really interested in paying out a lot of bitcoins the price is so high so what I've done here is I've done a, a sweepstakes for you to sign up for you just go to the forum sign up I'm gonna unlock this thread at midnight tonight Eastern time I'm gonna let uh, guessing run what you're gonna be guessing at is the closing price of the Bitcoin uh, and this is from Mt. Gox I'm gonna I'm gonna do a refresh on Mt. Gox for the bid and this is a snapshot of what it was when I did it earlier so make your guess in this format uh, two digits and then five digits after the decimal whoever's the closest is gonna win 50 bitcoins the threads all right, I'm sorry 50 Litecoins I wish I could give away 50 bitcoins uh, whoever wins is gonna win 50 Litecoins or the equivalent in bitcoins uh, I'll convert them if you want me to I'd rather have you sign up and get a Litecoin wallet uh, that's the purpose of this and we'll see that when I start talking about Satoshi Dice which is going to be the main topic here but so I will unlock this thread at midnight and you will have until Wednesday at midnight and then the thread will lock then two days later on Friday we'll get that price and whoever is the closest will win those 50 Litecoins so let's get over to that main topic and uh, that's going to be Satoshi Dice. Now, uh, Satoshi Dice is very controversial right now in the Bitcoin community because it is uh, essentially spamming the blockchain. And we'll see that. We'll go over to blockchain.info and look at that. But let me read this uh, real quick to explain it. Satoshi Dice is a blockchain based betting game. It's generally considered to be a DDoS attack, a, a dedicated uh, denial of service attack against the Bitcoin network and since it is bypassing the built-in anti-DDoS feature of Bitcoin which is the transaction fee uh, unlike traditional online gaming software wagers with Satoshi Dice can be sent without access to the website nor running any client software to play a Bitcoin transaction is made 
to one of the static addresses operated by the service, each having different payouts. The service determines if the wager wins or loses or, and sends a transaction in response with the payout to a winning bet or it returns a tiny fraction of the house's gain to a losing bet. As a result, the game spams the peer-to-peer -peer network and blockchain with useless data. Satoshi Dice forces players to pay a transaction fee on each result so the spam will successfully flood both the peer-to-peer -peer relay network and the blockchain. There has been suggestion that the service might also be used as a mixing service as the composition of a wallet can be material cha materially changed after running wagers through Satoshi Dice. Though this approach could change the makeup of the wallet, it does not sufficiently serve the mixing purpose as the coins returned in winning bets are tied to the coins from the wager transaction. So uh, let me make the disclaimer right here that I am not nearly technically sophisticated enough to understand how all this works. So for those of you who understand more than I do, and that's going to be a lot of you, please explain all the things that I don't understand in the comments. Now let's go over to the blockchain you can go here to blockchain.info and you can see uh, the transactions coming through here's the latest transactions and you can see the number of these that are Satoshi dice now in the green here you have the uh, number here's one that's called dice on crack I, I've never seen that before let's see if that's a Satoshi dice competitor and yeah, it looks like some kind of lottery thing for Bitcoin. So there's another one. So you can see the amount of transactions that are Satoshi Dice. Here's a bet of 6.7 Bitcoins. And uh, they're just coming through here fast and furious. Now, is that going to be a uh, problem for the Bitcoin? I don't know. And uh, that's being debated now here's bitmillions.com uh, so it looks like a lot of people are getting in on this game uh, and if you click it you can see it's going to take you, you take that up arrow and uh, and I don't really understand how these are marked either somehow these transactions are marked I don't know how that's known uh, if the person doing it voluntarily does it or if somehow the blockchain knows that's another thing I don't understand on how this works but you can see clearly that Satoshi Dice is accounting for a tremendous amount of Bitcoin transactions. Now, if we click on one of these uh, Satoshi Dice transactions, let's wait for a fairly large one to come through here. And there's a five, so let's click that one. And uh, you can see here the fee on that transaction was 0 0.001 Bitcoins. So uh, that's a thousandth uh, uh, oh, 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 one would a bit penny would be a hundredth of the Bitcoin that's going to be uh, seven cents uh, so this is going to be seven tenths of a cent so uh, that's almost a penny now so that's a, a transaction that goes through there is a fee there's a penny fee so it does appear that the users of Satoshi Dice are paying some fees and I wanted to uh, look at that when we look at the statistics here on our blockchain actually I'm sorry it's the charts these are the main charts uh, on blockchain and I encourage you to explore these uh, some real fascinating ones here's the market cap of Bitcoin and you can see we're not too far from a billion dollars in market cap and uh, that's just absolutely crazy um, but uh, total transaction fees is uh, really growing and uh, so is that uh, due to Satoshi Dice how much of that is due to Satoshi Dice um, the other one that I thought that's kind of interesting here is uh, cost percentage of transaction volume chart showing miners revenue as a percentage of the transaction volume and there's cost per transaction now here's miners revenue so you can see that uh, miners revenue has significantly increased uh, with this price increase uh, but what effect is the new ASIC mining the butterfly labs 
ASIC miner is going to have? I don't know the answer to that either. So this is the thread that this is being uh, debated on um, on the Bitcoin forum at bitcointalk.org. And this is the proposal. Should the Bitcoin community ban Satoshi Dice with the filter patch? Uh, should the new patch to filter out Satoshi Dice transactions be outlawed? Uh, and I don't really know how you're going to outlaw something. So apparently, and this is more thing, uh, more stuff I don't understand, but apparently someone has offered up a patch to kill the Satoshi Dice transactions. And he says, and by extension, Bitcoin itself, uh, this poll is to determine whether or not the Bitcoin community uh, should uh, outlaw this patch. Anyway, so you can see the votes here. Uh, allow miners to apply the patch is at the top at 41%. Uh, don't allow is 17%. Satoshi Dice is too big to fail at 11%. Punch people in the face is 20%. And buy Litecoin is 10%. Now that's actually, that's the one I like. Now, if you remember, I had uh, bought into the Litecoin rally. It actually started around four, I bought in around four cents. We ran all the way to 15. I dumped quite a few and dumped some on the way down. Got back in a little bit earlier. I bought some in around nine uh, bit cents, and I bought a lot down in here. And uh, so I may be wrong, but uh, I think that uh, if we go out to the long, long term here, and this does take a second to load, but uh, I think that a lot of people probably uh, came up with the same idea that I did, that uh, perhaps Satoshi Dice or someone else would uh, move over to the Litecoin network and it doesn't look like we're going to get that chart but uh, people have speculated that the fact that Litecoin is based upon a CPU uh, a different type of hash that it would be better a better network to run those sorts of betting systems on I don't know if that's true or not there's your yearly it's flashing here so you can see we're about back to where we started that blast off and on the volume uh, it's still there so it remains to be seen as to whether or not uh, there's anything to that moving over there uh, now I think it's a good idea uh, I don't agree with uh, banning Satoshi dice after all they are paying a fee I think uh, that the market should just go up naturally let the fees rise and uh, then uh, it may become cost prohibitive or an even better free market solution I would say is for someone to just go onto the Litecoin network and create a competitor of Satoshi Dice that has a lot lower cost of transaction and uh, by doing so uh, I think that probably that could force uh, the owner of Satoshi Dice to move uh, to a place where the transaction costs are lower. So that's my guess. Again, I'm speculating a lot of things I really don't understand. And those of you who understand a lot more than I do, uh, you could be uh, of a lot of help if you could explain those. So the last thing I wanted to point out on this is the uh, uh, issue of what I talked about earlier about money coming into the Bitcoin. It's, uh, it's my belief that uh, most of the money coming in is not affected by FinCEN regulations and uh, it does not have to be concerned about them. I, I think a lot of the people are like me, may have put in $500 or so. So let's just use that figure and do some math with that figure. Let's talk about $500. So let's imagine if, say, a million people uh, decided to jump into Bitcoin and put in $500. Well, that's 500 million market cap right there. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, a million people, five dollars. There's your 500 million dollar market cap. We're we're higher now at about seven, so you could say 700 dollars. So, a million people, 700 dollars. That's the current market cap of Bitcoin. Now, I suspect that uh, a lot of the people who are involved in Bitcoin, like myself, consider this to be uh, throwaway capital 
uh, venture capital, whatever. Uh, you know, you have certain investments. As you probably know, I have a silver channel. I promote physical silver and physical gold to protect you from the coming hyperinflation and potentially bank seizures and runs and everything else. Uh, and uh, I believe in keeping the bulk of my assets in precious metals to protect against those things. Uh, $500 for me, uh, that's play money. Uh, I have more in my, I have five or six or seven times more than that in my play money account for my uh, stock shorting and things. So that's just play money to me. But what's fascinating to me is that I suspect there's a lot more than a million people out there with $500 play money. So let's imagine that there's 10 million people out there with $500 play money to throw into bit, into Bitcoin. That's going to give us a market cap 10 times what we have, and that's going to give us a $700 price on the Bitcoin. Let's say it's $100 million. That's going to give us another tenfold. That's going to give us a $7,000 price on the Bitcoin. Uh, and that's 100 million people. So there are 6, 7 billion people in the world. Uh, how many are going to be interested in, in Bitcoin? I don't know. How many are going to put in more than $500? I don't know. But as it stands right now, if just 100 million of the world's people put in just $500 each into Bitcoin, you're talking about a $7,000 Bitcoin. And we'll talk to you next time.